It'll come down. Yeah. Just to bring having me down. Somebody that like does you fun. Co come and take our money to tell us what we're doing wrong. <laughs> <You know? laughs> G'day everyone, Pete Techman Coleman here for a very, very, very special episode of the Tech Effect. We have a very special guest today, and to help me introduce this guest, we have the other guy, Mr. Mark the Bearded Tech Skin. Welcome, Mark. Hey, crowd goes wild. <laughs> Listen to them. always do. G'day, Pete. How are you, mate? Really well. It's getting hot over here. We had, like, this weekend, uh, weekend just gone, it was hot and humid and, oh, yeah. So Nobody it's, likes it's, a bragger, here. Pete. It's cold over here, it's, and it's getting colder. That's that's what happens. That's what happens yeah. in the northern and southern hemisphere, <laughs> I suppose. One turns and the other one yeah. goes the other way. It's hey, winter Pete, where um, you are, Mark. It's winter, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Hey, uh, so look, before I introduce our next um, our next person, I I, I, I put the challenge. Guest. Yeah, Special look, guest. it's super. Yeah. It's, it's a huge show today. I'm really, really, really excited. <laughs> Huge, like we, but I, I put the challenge out to you, Pete, and um, and I said, look, Pete, we need a we need a big name, superstar. we need a, a superstar, right? Rock and star. and t like like a true FedEx guy, you definitely delivered. Always deliver. Right? But what Mr. happened FedEx. was, so what happened was, I said to you, you know, um, Pete, get us a big name, and you went, oh, cool, I've got it. I got JT on the show, and I really. Yep. Really? Jonathan JT, Thurston? No, no, the, yeah, Jonathan yeah. Thurston? I've gone, oh, and you've got, what? No. 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 And I'm, okay, oh, I've got, oh, oh. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you got Justin Timberlake. You said rock That's star. Right. That's right. I've gone, oh, no. And you've gone, no, no, not Justin Timberlake. A little bit older. And I've gone, oh, you are kidding me. You are kidding me. You've got... You've got James Taylor on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and you've gone. Mark, Mark, you know what? This All this goes to show is, is you don't know much about who's famous in AV. You know? <laughs> If you if you were if you had if you had if you had been in this business for years, you would know that when he talks about JT, he's talking about Jason Tirado. Oh, <laughs> not me. only the one yeah. and only Jason yeah. Tirado. Exactly. Mate, Listen, how you, are you? I guess you just moved to Australia, huh? So you just got there? You, because yeah. listen, man, I'm I, I'm well known in Australia. Even even my wife, when I tell her where I'm going, she goes, "Oh, they love you in Australia." I say, yeah. they, do. <laughs> they do. Welcome to the show, Jason. Great to have you on, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> what an intro. No. <laughs> Wait, you were hammering JT. me for so long. I, I couldn't let it go on any longer. <laughs> I'd drag you back down. So many oh, JTs like to, in this world that are famous, like but no one other fans. than you, that's for sure. That's it. That's <laughs> my industry rock star. You know, I mean, I remember, geez, we go way back, uh, Jason. I mean, I remember uh, one of our first meetings where uh, you, you came out to Australia. You were working yeah. for Crestron at the time, and right. you uh, we met at the University of the Sunshine Coast, and that's we're right. in a, we're sitting in this boardroom, like the like the IT director's boardroom, and everyone's you know, being very prim and proper. And, and I said something along the, I said something to Jason, like, oh yeah, we're not really happy about this and blah, blah, blah. And then I remember someone on the, 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 the IT team said, oh, no, no, all right. Well, you know, we can, we can have this conversation later. It's like, Jason's gone, no, no tell me what, what's the issue you've got. And I'm like, okay. Right. And that was, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was the you, just, you confronted it you, straight away. I'm like, okay, okay <laughs> if you want to really know, I'll tell you what my problem is. <laughs> That's been our relationship ever since, Peter. Exactly. You know, yeah, it hasn't yeah. changed yeah, yeah, from yeah. that day. Yeah. No, no matter what I show you, you've got something wrong with it. You know, <laughs> I, that, I, that's your that's your brand. I was I was showing you I was showing you something the other day. I remember, and you're like, "Oh man, that's so cool. That's so cool." Well, but can you add this into it too? Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like why not? Why can't you just add it on? You know, and but. Listen, man, I've, I've, I've learned to kind of just let that stuff roll off my back when I'm dealing with you. It's constructive feedback or something, isn't it? That's what Pete calls it. <laughs> no, I, what I remember, Pete, you remember when you came to Budapest? Do you remember yes. that? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember yep. that? Yeah, I mean, Love you, that. You, yeah, I mean, that, that was, kidding aside, 
having having somebody like you who has oh don't inflate his ego any more than easy. Hang on, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It'll come down just to bring me down. Somebody like you come and take our money to tell us what we're doing wrong. There's nothing like it. There's nothing Come like on. it. I mean that. There's nothing yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> for every for every penny he sticks in the emotional uh, piggy bank, he pulls he pulls ten bucks out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like a reverse no, but, ATM. No, but the thing is, the thing that I love about about Lightwear, the the company you're currently working for, is that yeah. they actually do listen. I, I remember yeah. uh, on that trip. On that trip, I was with Gerge and, and I'm in the room, and I'm saying, "You've got to stop." like putting this huge branding all over your products, like the switches on the wall and stuff like I said, make it subtle. Like I'm not saying either don't brand it or make it very, very subtle, like do black on black or white on white or something like that. And yeah. because like, it's like, you know, the, the, what I call it, it's like a dog pissing, pissing on every, every light pole, right? Like it's leaving its mark. And it's like, but why? Like, but, but you're trying to convince architects to put this, your product in, why put all this branding all over it that no one likes Right. And next thing you know, I go to Infocom, catch you on the stand, and there it is, black on black, white on white with the, with the branding. It's like, and I'll tell you what happened then, Jason. Pete walks up to me, he goes, see that? My idea. Yeah. <laughs> that was right. it. Walked That's off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, he, he deserves to feel good about himself for some of the things he does. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got yeah, to gotta feel better about myself. But yeah. look, look, but before, before Lightwear, I, let's, for the people, yeah. for the, the two people in the industry that don't know you, Jason, all right, for their benefit, Mark, you, Mark, and Mark's yeah. mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Look, I, I, I must have missed the invite when you came to Australia and, and went to um, and went to the Sunshine Coast Uni. I, you know, I was just a, I don't know, just, I was just wrong. The other guy. <laughs> I was just the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that other guy you said to come, Pete? <laughs> Jason, like we we go way back, and then like. Prior to when we first met, I mean, you were with AMX, right? And, and AMX back in the day, like obviously it's changed a lot now, but back in the day in Australia, AMX was the go-to control yeah. solution and yeah. switching yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, like you, you cut your teeth there and then like, tell us a bit about your history, of, you know, like where you've come from and, where, and to where you are today. Well, I started out as a rep, a uh, manufacturer's rep in California. A mm -hmm. good friend of mine, Steve Alexander, university buddy, uh, hired me as his first employee. Um, it was funny, he, you know, I, I was, it was in my late twenties. I was, I, ne I needed a job. I was looking yeah. for a job, you know, I had some part-time stuff and he'd started this company and he said, listen, I need somebody that I can trust because the company's in my house. Like I've got to give you a bedroom. You got to come into my house every morning, you know, and go to work. And so he's like, I, you know, I know I can trust you, you know, so you come and you go in that bedroom and you answer the phone. And so I, that, that was the beginning. And from, from there, I went on, joined AMX. But you, what, I can tell you want to say something, Peter. You can't no, I do. I do. Come yeah, on. Yeah, there, there's ahead. something what, you're not what? telling us. There's something you're not telling us, Jason. What, what were you doing prior to AMX? You mean my acting career? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh it gets, it gets you bigger. Want a superstar. Here we go. I, right. I knew we were getting right. a big name. I didn't yeah. know it was this big. Yeah. Yes. Listen, Mark, Mark, go back and check out the Disney movie Blank Check because there's a delivery man in that scene <laughs> that really stole the show. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to find that out. Yeah, yeah. You check in, that out. I, IMDb, baby. Oh, in, yes. Insert oh. snippet here. <laughs> He, he he is he was Mr. Hollywood, right? Mr. Hollywood. Back Mr. in the day, Hollywood. he was Mr. Hollywood. There wow. you go. What I a... gave it all up for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two talking to two yeah. I'm like a failed stuff. soap opera star, you know. I'm like a failed soap opera star, bitter about all that didn't happen. And yeah, you know what? Here I am. <laughs> there you go. So, oh, so you, you you gave up acting. You you went all right. This is not for me. I, I, I've got uh, bigger fish to fry. And you decided you, you joined AMX. You were there for how long? I was there for almost four years as a director. And then, okay. uh, but at, at eight, eight years as a rep and four years as a director. Gotcha. So 12 years all up, right? Or 
Yeah, and then you moved on to to Crestron. Crestron. From there? Yeah, yeah. I was director. I was the first director of international sales at Crestron. Um, yeah. And actually, one of the things I, I don't. We shouldn't go into that too much history. I, I was I was there. <laughs> it went great. <laughs> Had a great time. Met a lot of really wonderful people mm -hmm. in Australia. I mean, yeah. that was really when I started coming to Australia. Was as yeah. as a Crestron guy, you know, and, yeah. and getting to know um, Jason, right? Yeah. You know, and well, we spoke about on our on our last show. We spoke about Jason, Jason Lewis, JL. He Lewis. entered our competition for oh. show us your rack. Show us your rack. Show us your rack. <laughs> That's our competition. I've yeah. seen his He's... rack, man. He's gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> so well, he fronted up. With, <clears throat> he fronted up with a pretty good rack. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mark, I, I'd take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, so, Pete's yeah, only yeah. Pete's just a talker, mate. You know, he, he talk about racks all day long, but until he shows us one of his own, then um, yeah, yeah, exactly. we don't believe him. Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, Jason, Crestron, Jason Lewis, and Vicky Dial, and yeah, um, yeah, and, and Craig. I mean, yeah, the, all the all that. Oh gosh, there were so many wonderful people there at, at the yeah. Crestron uh, Australia office. I, it was really one of my favorite places to go, you know, in the world. Um, I loved it, and that really took off. Like when you were there, I remember when. When we first met, that was really like when Crestron, I think there was some, maybe uh, there was some to market issues, you know, like trying to get the product to market and things like that. And then things started to come together. And uh, I think Hills at the time was distributing. And then I think Crestron then took over distribution or Crestron Australia took over distribution and everything just really, yeah. actually, you know what it was? It was when uh, HD based, well, in my opinion, it was when HD based T sort of hit the market and, right. um, AMX had a lot of problems with their HD based T solution. Um, and, and Crestron had a lot more experience cause they'd been doing something similar for a number of years, like over delivering over a cat X cable. And then, mm -hmm. so it was an easier, my understanding it was an easier transition for them. And, and a lot of people in, in Australia who was, who'd put out AMX solutions and had problems with it, they were then kind of like, well, let's have a look at Crestron. And I think it, for me, that was like the turning point for Crestron in Australia that when it really started to take off, because I think prior to that, people saw it as a, as a home solution and, and, and AMX was the corporate solution. Yeah. So you think you think it had to do with the HD base T implementation? Well, I, just from my own experience, we we deployed um, the first DVXs and DGXs in the world. They were in they were still in beta mode, right? And we had to sign off on it and say, yeah, we understand it's still beta, and we deployed those, and we had a lot of problems with it, and then and, and a lot of other uh contractors and other people had the same issues that we did right. and everyone right. started looking for alternate solutions because everyone believed that the you know like the hd based t model was you know this digital transportation model was the right thing to do but they wanted to they wanted a system that was solid right and then that's when i think crestron came into its own because crestron's going hey we've got a product here it's yeah, a competitive yeah. price and it works yeah yeah so you you think I, I'm 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 guessing Jason that you think it's probably from the time that you were coming to <laughs> from Australia, at the time that you joined and and you made some point. some critical <laughs> Mark, strategic decisions, you, Mark. and yeah, exactly. Pete just completely shot you down in flames and no, says he, nothing he about you. A five minute rant about yeah 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 H and <laughs> yeah. when yeah when oh yeah it just happened to coincide you know. Yeah. <laughs> So he's yeah. giving you one back, like he's inflated your ego and then he's just absolutely come in with a big right hook. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was that. Mark, thank you. Thank you for, 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 for realizing that. I think you could see it in my eyes, right? Yeah, you know, yeah like, I can see the pain. It was just... right, right. <laughs> well, so, so, all right. So we'll, let's let's move on for that. So you're how long were you at Crestron for? I was there for seven years, seven years. And then yep. I think then the next time we met, it was at Infocom. And you're at RGB Spectrum, is that right? RGB Spectrum, yeah. I yeah. so one. You remember I said I was a rep when I was yep. when I was back in California at the very yep. beginning of the career. Yeah. RGB Spectrum was one of our core manufacturers, and so I'd right. known the CEO for many years. Uh, we hadn't been working together closely in in you know ten or eleven years. But uh, when I left Crestron, I, I, it was it was a good change for me. And I, Bob Marcus, the CEO, and Scott Norder. The guy, Scott Norder was the COO and I had worked for Scott when I was at AMX. He was the director mm -hmm. of marketing and we had, we had kind of been colleagues there. And so we, through this through a sort of professional network of people, it really felt like the, the next best place. 
and I, I was, uh, um, but I want to get to where I met Gergay. Can I talk about Gergay for a second? I've, I've, well, <laughs> so, so who, you got it, you got it. Who is Gergay? How did, ah, uh, ah, uh, all right. <laughs> how did you meet Gergay? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, I was What's introduced this? to Gergay by a man named Murugan. Mur this is the guy, man, this is like reading the Bible. It's like reading Genesis. I keep going back to all these people, you know, and so-and-so beget so-and-so, and then so-and-so <laughs> moved on with so-and-so. Yeah, and then, you know, so Murugan, Murugan Parmasivam uh, was, the, was, the, was the guy at Crestron who, who really had a big contribution to creating Crestron India. And he and I had been, remained good friends after I left. And he had gone to Lightwear and he said to me one day, he said, Jason, listen, this Lightwear thing is starting to take off. I think you should meet the CEO because there's some work to do in the U.S. and maybe you could you could become a part of it. Yeah, so so Gergé is the founder of Lightwear. Right? Founder, so he, he started this from scratch. I, I've seen right. like the that's first right. box that he's built. Right. It's there right. in the in the uh, in the office at HQ in, in Budapest. Yeah. Right. He, he built he, this from look, nothing. Look, I tell you, if if. I'll give you just one simple little story about Gurge yeah. that I I just think is so telling, right? This man's family was in Romania during Ceausescu. And while Ceausescu was, was being overthrown, right? He's like five or six. His family flees the country and goes to Hungary. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought about anybody who left to go to Hungary to have a better life? Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who decides that yeah. that's the country I'm going to go to? Because yeah, yeah. you know what? There's opportunity over there. That's you know, right. yeah. You know, it's, it's so anyway. He his family flees to Hungary, and he ends up being accepted into the most prestigious university. It's one of the top prestigious universities in Europe, but but yeah. in in Budapest by far. Graduate graduates with an engineering degree, and he goes out and he just starts fixing things. So right? it's fixing yeah. projectors, you know, stuff like this. And and as he starts making some money fixing projectors. He starts not only building stuff, but he starts hiring all these engineers that are coming out of the Budapest <laughs> University, software yep. engineers, hardware engineers. You know, and, so, and as he's building, he's building it with these with these classically trained engineers, yep. which and I, I just I, to me, I just find it really fascinating because you hear about stuff in the AV business where you're like, oh, we've yep. got so many engineers, oh, so many engineers and they're all CTS. I mean, there's nothing wrong with CTS, yep. but there's a difference between being an AV engineer and a guy graduated with, you know, a master's degree or a doctor, you know, a doctorate from from a, a major university, yep. you know, major European university. So, you know, it's just it's just different. And so it was always this, uh, this unknown, right? Unknown about this, this product. Like who is, I mean, for me, I mean, what was, what was Lightwear? Was it a rebadge product out of Asia somewhere and blah, blah, blah. I don't know anything about this product. Yeah. And then um, a few years back, I, I went over, I had the opportunity to go over to, to Budapest and, and meet the, the team. And from that moment, it changed my whole perspective of the company and the product. I'm like, yeah. this is no OEM product. This is nothing that's rebadged. These I got to meet the engineers. I got to meet the the, the founder, Gergay. I got to talk to these people. I got to see what they were doing and getting like, you know, tell them how they could improve their product, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> yeah, most companies won't listen to me at that level. That's right. They listen to me. Uh, you've created yeah, an they've animal. Been specialist Pete, Pete Tech Man, you know, receivers that just stand in front of Pete and go, sure, Pete, sure. <laughs> Exactly. But that changed everything for me, like meeting the yeah. people and seeing the company and, 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 and getting hands on with the product. I'm like, from that moment, I'm like, I feel confident and secure with the product. I don't, there, it, there was no doubt that in my mind that what they were building and what they were doing, that they were on the right track. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I appreciate that, Peter. And, and look, I, I had the same feeling and that's why I committed my, my professional life. And now, you know, the rest of my professional life to this company, I, I, I felt the same thing uh, immediately. And there, you know, there were a couple of things that jumped out at me. One is, was like I mentioned, the competency, just the sheer mm. competency throughout mm. the organization. And then also Gergay's personal philosophy about information, which I think yeah. is related to his background as a child mm. and, and, the, and the communist fall and all this stuff. But he has this very unique attitude towards information, which is it should be available. It mm -hmm. should be open. Yeah. It needs yeah. to be accessible. You know, any information that you have should be accessible to whoever you're dealing with, you know, and, and that transparency of his personality 
mm. is manifested in the product. Like when yeah. you when you go to the open API of a Lightwear product, yeah. you will find every possible piece of information. So it's not like you got to call somebody up and go, oh, can you let yeah. me in this door or let me in that door or backdoor me this or blah, blah, blah. If we see it, you see it. Yeah. And and I, and, and I, it's just part of him and the way he approaches the world. Yeah. yeah. But how did you, you didn't finish telling us the story of how you, you came on board with Lightwear. You, you, you said you yeah working so, with somebody so Murugan Murugan introduced us uh you know and I and I said uh hey let's meet at Infocom and it was in Vegas yeah. that year right right so, yeah so Gergay and I Gergay and I decide to meet at this little spot and and he brings along his guy and I'm I'm there and uh we we walk in and and uh to the restaurant but you know restaurants in Vegas during Infocom you know yeah. it's it's nightmare you know yeah, and so crazy. I could see what was going on I was like just stand here, stand here. I'll take care of this, you know? So I, I went over and I made some deal with the bartender, you know, and I said, I, I need three seats now, you yeah. know? And so, and yeah, so yeah. the guy was like, okay, okay, okay. I'll take care of it. So they cleared out three seats and I got Gergay over there and sat him down. And, and I think the first thing I impressed him with was I got him a table, you know, <laughs> you, you made it happen. <laughs> exactly. I made it happen. Cause I, I was yeah. not going to let this slip away. Right. So we just sat there and we started talking. Um, and out of that conversation, we decided it would be good if I took a trip to Budapest. And so I said, yeah, I'll, you know, I'd love to. So um, my wife and I flew out there. I bring her, I bring my wife on my job interview. She was with me at my AMX interview. <laughs> right. She was with me yeah. at my crush interview. Because I, when you're hiring me, you're getting her. You know, actually, <laughs> like, you're, you're hiring her and then you're getting me. You know, because right. that's okay. she, she comes along. Um, yep. In fact, what happened in my AMX negotiation was they completely left me out of the conversation she the, my boss my boss started going well i think the travel will probably be about 60 percent of the time and she looks across him and goes no 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 maybe maybe 50 at the most 50 percent at the most and he, he looked at me and he looked at her and then he just started conducting the whole negotiation with her so i, I bring her to budapest with me and uh the same thing happens, you know, we're just, we're all sitting around talking about it after we kind of find out we like each other and we're going to go. And then I, I let her um, negotiate my, my life with the, with the CEO. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man who's, who's worked it out a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot earlier than most, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so what year was that? What, what year did you come on board with like, where? 2018, because I'll be four, I'll be four years in September. Okay. So I'll be I'll be four full years in September. It's like three years and eight months or whatever right now. But yeah. right, so you, you come into Lightwear, but you didn't, you know, where, where did you start as a, as a, uh, as a rep for Lightwear? You started and, at the top, you know, mate. So you yeah, yeah, well, this is, this is, yeah, how, how did we get from zero to hero in, uh, in four years? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued about this. Mark, I've got a private YouTube channel. I'll sign you up for it. <laughs> <laughs> You can register. I'll give you all the secrets. Uh, <laughs> we um, they, there was there was an existing distribution network in the United States that was owned by some other people, but they were using a Lightware name. And so part of what we wanted to do was not only uh, make it better, but we wanted to um, exert control. And so what we made a deal with Gergay was that if I came on as a consultant and for six or seven or eight months I did what I was supposed to, then we would as a group move forward and and reform the Lightware North America organization. And so that was what we did. So I started off just like, I just give me a phone and I, you know, and a computer and I'll just start working. And then, um, yeah, it worked out. So right now we're right now, things are, it's exploding, man. It's just exploding. We got, we, we got some good stuff coming. But I think, um, for me, like with Lightware, the, the, like, because when they sort of first started, they had a lot of kind of almost I'd like to say me too products. You know what I mean? Like they similar to what Crestron offered or Extron or, and, and so on. And, but then you guys started uh, thinking outside the box, right? And then you started looking at, hang on, how can we be different? And I think one of the first products that you came out with where you were different uh, and are still different is with the relationship that you've got with Cisco, right? And you've got the, you know, able to use the touch tens and, and so on like how did how did that all come about so um what when, when i first got to lightware there were three things that i took away there was the open api the diagnostic mm -hmm. and the analytics right and the open api was that information thing i'm talking about right the the application programmers interface the way that you interface with the box 
and um, I'd seen their logical event manager. And because of my history and control systems, the mm -hmm. first thing I thought of was, okay, well, here's a simple way to do some very if then statements, right? Just some yep. Boolean logic, right? That you just want to go if this, then that, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But at the same time, Cisco is opening up their API on the touch 10. And they had just made that announcement. I think it was 9.1.3 when they opened it up with, with Cisco CE. And, and in my mind, I thought, you know what? Here's this touch screen that's been sitting with every single Cisco mm -hmm. item that they've ever sold and they're including it now for free. And it, all it's doing is making phone calls. It's just making a phone call, you know? And this is in, in the age of, of, of apps. I thought, well, why can't we just go ahead and take advantage of their API and our API and make it like peanut butter and chocolate, you know? But on top of that, on top of that, there was a, a, a Crestron or a, a AMX or a control system in the room. So you had right. two touch screens. So it was, it wasn't, it, it was, there was two, two uh, factors to that is like, yeah, which one do I use as a user? And then also the cost element on top of that, like you're adding extra cost to control the room. I already have a touch panel in the room. That's right. That's exactly it. And so be, I guess because of my control system background, that was the first thing I thought. I was like, hey, here's this API box that does whatever I tell it to. Here's yeah. this touch screen sitting in the room. Let's just connect them, you know? And so we wrote a little plan and we started, you know, we started our work and we made a little uh, configuration wizard on our website so people could go through and ask questions and answer questions and they would come out with a working system. And again, we really try to take, look, I, you know, I'm no genius, but these these guys are, yeah. you know, yeah. and, I, and what I just decided was if we could funnel people through a system that would allow them to have a predictable outcome as opposed to just waiting for some smart guy with a laptop to show up and save their lives, maybe my, people would like that. You know, yeah. maybe people would like that. Just a repeatable, simple, predictable outcome that if they do the instructions, they're going to get the same thing every time. Yeah. And that, that was really kind of the core of what we started with with that. I mean, ideally, we, when we were talking about pitching it, I wanted to pitch it as a USB accessory. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and I use those words really specifically, you know, USB because they've got the USB attachment. It's literally true, but also because people are familiar with USB accessories. Right. If you talk to somebody, you say, oh, a USB accessory, you think, oh, yeah, that thing I plug into my computer, you know, like yeah. there's this instant. Mm -hmm. That's not that hard. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time. Right. Yeah. And, so, and so when we were talking about it with customers, I was really trying to use that terminology because I wanted them to have that that impression about yeah. the experience you're talking about. Right. Yeah. 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 So you move, move along and, you and you've just hit the hit the nail on the head with USB. We, we're moving now into yeah. uh, the age of Taurus. Uh, and, and I think um, Lightwear has done a, uh, a really good job of bringing to the, to the fore, like we've, you know, in years gone by, we've talked about IT and AV convergence. Now, um, Lightwear is actually not talking about IT and AV convergence, it's talking about USB and AV convergence, right? And you guys are, have to be the front runners in USB-C uh, product manufacturing and delivering and information uh, at, uh, currently at the moment. An integration, integration, integration of those those products, right? Because you're right. I mean, like even the camera that I'm on right now, I mean, that's like a, it's a USB camera. Like the microphone right. I'm using is a USB microphone. I mean, that's 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 the kind of product that's getting rolled out into a lot of meeting spaces. Maybe not the larger meeting spaces. Maybe they're using, you know, maybe some more advanced systems and technologies. But for the majority of, of small to medium spaces, you've got USB peripherals in the room and it's like what, and it's so uncontrolled as well. Like in the past, like how does it operate? And, you know, so I, I think that was, it was a mess. What was, what was happening? Like, how do you control all that? I think you're too, Peter, you're onto something. And, and to go back to your HD based key thing, right? Mm. It was a mess. You know, yeah. it really was a mess. And then everybody was caught between analog and digital yeah. and nobody really knew which way the world was going to go. Or if, yeah. even if they did know they couldn't go all at once because that's not yeah. the way things work. And so the HD based key thing created some order out of the mess mm -hmm. that was existing, right? And I, 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 to me, this is a very similar inflection point right now. You know, there's USB things out there. Some people think they're simple. Some people know they're more complex. Some of them work together. Some of them don't, but nobody seems mm -hmm. to know why. And there's a, so there's an enormous mm -hmm. amount of mystery, you know, around, around USB and USB-C especially right yeah. now. And, and, and that's really where we saw opportunity. You know, we decided, okay, you know, if we can figure this out, and we can do it with our engineers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and come at it from an engineering standpoint. And you said something earlier that, that, that I want to go back to. You said you complimented us, really. You know, you said you were thinking outside the box. 
And I'd say we were listening outside the box. Yeah, you know, yeah. that was really what made the difference is this wasn't an in the box thing. What we did is we went to a customer and we said, hey, what's the problem? And they said, oh, mm -hmm. these USB mm -hmm. things are coming into my life and I don't know what to yeah. do. You know, I, yeah. I got this thing and then somebody else brings in that thing and, and, I, and I still got to connect to that. What, you know, and we, and we went away and we thought about it. And then we just kept, kept checking back. Hey, is this the right path? Is this the right path? Do you, do you agree with this decision? You know, and in, in that way, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of is that we, I think we listened enough to get this one as close to right as we can, you know? But, that, but that's uh, like, it, it sounds so simple though, like to listen, to ask questions, right? And to and ask the right questions from the people who, whether they design it, whether they install it, whether they program it, whether they use it, like it, it, it's, it's a mix of people that you need to be speaking to. And the fact that you're actually asking these questions, what is the problem that we, we're trying to solve? And then to go away and design something, um, I, I, I think it's great because you guys, th this is not a, that you guys built this from the ground up. Like, it's not as if like you've just added on to bits and pieces. You've gone, look, mm -hmm. let's read, let's engineer this from the ground up and you, you built right. it, right? Right. That's right. That's right. And you know, I, you know, you say it sounds simple and it is simple, you know, it's just, it's what's not simple, I guess, is doing it, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's yeah, well, so much <laughs> perceived voodoo. Well, it is voodoo around USB-C, right? That's, there's, uh, but you know, it comes back to Jason. You're saying earlier about the the ethos of sharing information. Now, I've been on, I've been on your website, and um, you know, and the amount of USB C training, or actually, the amount of training on your website period is is probably second to none. I don't, I don't think uh, I've seen anything that's so well delivered, well structured, or, or just thorough is probably the better word. Mm. Um, in, in any website training, and let's face it, the last 12 months, there's been a hell of a lot of website training going on, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, the, but the, the, I've been through a lot of the USB-C stuff and, and gone, this is, this now makes sense. This is, this is cutting through some of that voodoo. And, no, and to most no. of it, it is voodoo. Why doesn't that work with that one? Why doesn't that work Why? with that? I've no idea. You know, a couple of years ago, I plug in a, a USB-C laptop and wondering why I can't get an image out there. Well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Doesn't yeah. 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 That, that was one of the things that doesn't support. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, really, really thank you, Mark. Thank you. I, I, that, that, that is a huge compliment to our training department and the people who spent a lot of time and energy putting that stuff together and the research that went into it. Mm. And uh, we, we are proud of it. And, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you looked at it. I'm really glad to hear that it, 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 it speaks to you because yeah, we take it seriously. You know, we're, and I think it's, it's funny. Um, you can have a lot of emphasis on product training, which is good because the products have the technology in them. You can also have a lot of emphasis on the science of what you're doing, right? The science of audio, the science of video, the science of, of Ethernet and TCPP and all that. And if you do this first part, it really makes the products a lot much easier. You know, if you start with the product, you're sort of assuming people know all this stuff and a lot of them don't, you know, or they think they do, but they don't, you know, and now you're, you're telling them something about over here and, and, it's just, it's not as effective, you know? So we really do try to try to place a lot of emphasis on let's let's share the science behind the stuff first, you know? Yeah. 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 We've gone into yeah. the, the age of Taurus. You've, you've got this cool, um, cool product. I was, I was at uh, one back when, when our last IAC was, it was that uh, 2020? Last year. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like five years ago. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my first experience with the great JT was actually, um, I, I flew into, I flew into Amsterdam and, um, and I literally he was, he got was a, waiting there in the, in the Tesla. To pick <laughs> up. Yeah. I, I jumped in a Tesla and I'm going, oh, I'll have to do what Cameron talks about getting these Teslas. Oh, right. So I get, I get to my accommodation, <laughs> jump in the shower. Yeah, I don't know. It's co it's coming around five o'clock. Jump in the shower. There's a knock at your door. Bang, oh, no, straight no. back <laughs> out. And I'm going to the, to the Taurus um product launch and here's this big uh vibrant fast talking energetic jt and uh i was a little bit late you know i was sort of thinking was there <laughs> <laughs> so um so look tour and i went this is actually a bit of a game-changing product you know this is this is bringing so much stuff together and making life easier for for Integrators. What, well, what was it that jumped out at you, Mark? I mean, you know, what, when, when you make that statement, what was it that you thought changed? Oh, look, I think it's the, 
it was the, um, the USB host switching. I think was pretty pretty powerful. Um, what have I got in here? Uh, now, now you sort of bring in Dante. Correct. Correct. Yeah, he had a bit of a product line. There's a there's a there's a whole story about how this sort of came together, and much much like we've just sort of gone through. And yeah. I went, you know, there's there's not a great deal of product out there that I've seen that fits the mold or gives the ability because USB C is it's, is, it's is voodoo. a voodoo, right? And it's, it's voodoo right now. I know. You know what? It's so funny. I'll tell you a quick. Um, how are we doing on time? Are we doing okay? We're good. Time? Oh okay. yeah. Yes, it, it, it's we'll all about right. you, JT. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter, this is coming from you, this that is your platform. So much. I know. I, <laughs> for you to say it's about anybody else is just, it's such, it feels unnatural, honestly. You know, you <laughs> get out of here, Mr. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, uh, I, so, uh, but to this, this last voodoo point, then I'll, then we'll, we'll let, let people, let Marco get some breakfast. Um, <laughs> I, I was at, a, at a, uh, a real live demo in San Francisco last week with a client, you know, and, and there's the corporate client and there's the integrator and we're all sitting around and we're all talking about some stuff. And in the other room, the techs are actually putting the Taurus through its paces because they're testing it for potential deployment. And so we're talking with this customer. They've got hundreds of rooms and the, the conversation's going well. All the stuff you and I are excited about right now, right? It's happening in the room, blah, 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 blah. And then the tech walks in the room. There's like eight people in there. And he, he comes in, he sits down, he goes, Taurus doesn't work. And I was like, what? And he goes, the Taurus doesn't work. I said, what do you mean it doesn't work? He goes, I've got it plugged in, you know, and I got this going to that display, and then I can't get this thing going to that display. And I said, all right, let's go look at it. Come on. So we walk in the other room, and now all eight people are coming with me, you know. And so we're all, you know, that, that the client, the potential client who I really had a great relationship with up until about 30 seconds ago, you know, is now, <laughs> is now following us into the room. And I, and I go in and I look and I can see he's got this little Mac mini and he's got my Taurus and he's got the two displays. And the first thing I noticed was he's got this Apple USB-C cable plugged into my box and the Taurus. And, and I said, that cable, is that yours? And he goes, no, no, I got it from him. And I said, okay, is that a known good quality USB-C cable with all the connectivity mm -hmm. required? And he goes, uh, well, it charges the laptop. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, well, come here, let me show you something, you know, so we went into the tool set and I showed him how the cable wasn't passing any video, you know, and I said, that's not a good cable, man. It's not, you know, let, let's start there. So we pulled the cable out. I had my known good USB-C cable. I plugged it in, bam, the thing started working. And, and I mean, number one, it was a good story for Lightwear, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's nice, but it also kind of goes back to this theme, which is, if he plugged it in and he didn't know why it didn't work, he's all he's going to do is quit. You know, he's yeah. just going to leave. You know, he's going to come back in the room and now the thing doesn't work. Now Lightwear sucks at Avidex and I don't get the client, blah, blah, blah. And, and he never plugs it in again. And that's just the end of the story. But it's not yeah. true. You know, it's not true. And what you have to do is you, you have to be able to show people the tools, you know, yeah. hey, man, you, know, you think you're doing something with this USB stuff, but it ain't that simple. But let me show you how, you know, how you can use these tools to really help yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's no, good. And we went through that a couple of weeks ago, we caught up here in New York and you went and you showed, you opened up the, the GUI, uh, web-based GUI. I, I sent a, was it a web-based GUI? No, it's an executable, executable. It's executable. Word, okay. That's executable. And, and, and you went into it and we had a cable plugged in because and, and we were able to actually see whether or not it would pass video or not. And I was like, exactly. wow. I mean, like, you're on site you're, as a tech, you're trying to troubleshoot, something's not working to have that information at your fingertips is invaluable, right? Because like, I, how do you know? I mean, like you said, oh, it charges my laptop. So right. maybe there's an expectation that's going to work for video as well. Yeah, it's That's a, the right, downside right, of universal, right? Like it's, it's, you know, you say universal. And so everybody thinks that it's, it's yeah. universal. But what there really is the <laughs> physical connector will fit in, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So here we go, right? It's called... You ready? Name that acronym, right? It's, it's a very, it's like such a creative name. And, um, and I'm going uh, to... He's gonna Googling it. Look at him. I can see him. He's like, where's the mouse? Oh, uh, I, I, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let me just, let me just, let me just... Are we playing NTA? Let me just get, let me just get my, um, my, uh, my headset here. And I, so for every, and, and you should be able to hear this, for every time you get an answer correct, I'm going to do this. Correct. Oh, hang on. Okay. A bit loud. Correct. 
Did you hear that? Is that yeah. loud enough? Yeah, yeah. yeah. plenty. All right. And for every time you get one incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So no I've done a lot of homework. On this show. As, as you can see, I've done a lot of homework here. Okay. <laughs> it's called Name That Acronym. Here we go. You've got, um, you've got 10 acronyms uh, with, with yes. a bonus point. All right. Okay. So you can potentially get 11 points out of this. Here we go. Pete, you've got to keep score. All right. You, All you right. haven't got much to do here. You've just got to keep score. <laughs> And as long as you can count to 11, Jeez, that's a struggle. You'll be fine. Here we go. All right, well, let's get, let's get you warmed up because this is this is a really easy one. Ready? Number one, AV. Audio visual. Right. Oh. Hang on. Correct. I got to press the button. I've got to that. <laughs> All right. Number two, IP. Internet protocol. Correct. All right. Yeah, see, this is uh, don't get lured into a false sense of security here, Jason. This, this is going to get harder from here on in. Okay, number three. Now you've got the first two. You should be able to get the third one. A V over I P. I should actually tell you the acronym. A V O I P. <laughs> Audio visual over internet protocol. Yeah. yeah there you go. Correct. <laughs> We're going well. Correct. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm giving, giving you the answer. All right, here we go. HDMI. High definition multimedia interface. Oh, correct. Yes, look at you go. I think Pete got that one wrong, actually. Um, oh, I got that was like the only one I got right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number five, SDVOE. Software defined video over Ethernet. Oh, wow. correct. Go. All right, here we go. SDI. Something digital interface. Oh, hang on, hang on. Um, standard digital interface. Incorrect. What? Oh. Serial. What? Serial oh, digital interface. Standard. Okay. <laughs> All right. That. This one. This okay. one. This one might test your um, design skills, Pete. You. Sh I didn't put this one in last time, but you should get this. You ready? O F E. Oh yeah. O F E. Can you use it in a sentence? Um, Pete, I'll give that one to you. Um, this laptop is O F E. This, yeah, this yeah? this furniture is O F E. Only for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> All right, it actually stands for Owner Furnished Equipment. Oh, dude, okay, all right. Yeah, so, yeah client supplied sort of stuff. Yeah, sort of all, stuff. Right, good. all right, here we go. Um, HDCP. Hang on. It's high definition control protocol. H. It's control for HDs, high definition control protocol. Incorrect. <laughs> Do <laughs> you want to throw that one in, Pete? Like test you through. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. High bandwidth, digital uh, content protection. Oh, High bandwidth, go. digital content protection. Oh, that's an old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's an old one. Bandwidth, digital content. That's a good one. All right. I should have known, man. That's right at my alley. All right. Okay. Dante. Dante stands for network audio. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think it stands for? It's got network written on it. <laughs> yeah. Digital audio network transmission. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you a, incorrect. an incorrect. Yeah, I should get an incorrect. I should, I should, <laughs> digital, digital audio different. network through Ethernet. There you go. <laughs> through Ethernet. All right. And, and number nine, uh, number ten. This is one. Are you ready? This 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 might stump you, right? Because um, I don't know anyone that actually knows this. A Vixer. Audiovisual Information Association with an X. <laughs> Is it an Audio experience or something? Uh, incorrect. <laughs> Audiovisual Integrated Experience Association. Yeah. Here's your bonus point. You talked about it. CTS. Certified Technology Specialist. Correct. Finish on a win. Well done. Oh, 6.5. <laughs> Six point oh five. How did I get? How did I do against Pete? Did I do better than Pete? I think Pete got five. 
Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, well, I mean, this is the, the yeah, this is all you got to do to be a CEO or, or a president. Yeah, yeah, you just got to get higher than higher than six, and um, and you qualify. That, is that on your YouTube channel actually? The, the I'm, I'm, about to go get, I'm about to go get real high, so I think I'm I've accomplished it. <laughs> Jason yeah. Tirado, mate, he's hang been on, fantastic. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, you know, one thing you actually brought it to my attention that we didn't talk about. Oh, what? S your your alliance with SDVOE. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Because no, well, like we'll, last we'll year at at, yeah. at at Integrated Systems Europe, I believe you announced that you guys yeah. are signed on for uh, to be an SDVOE partner. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So SDVOE um, foundationally, you know, it's one of those technologies that we we really believe in. We think the mission that they're on is the right mission. Um, it, it's it's. Uh, I personally know Justin Kennington from our time working together at Crestron. And I saw his great success, you know, when he jumped off and formed this association. And just as soon as we could, we, we wanted to be members and get involved. And so it kind of, like you were talking about, Peter, how some of our product line kind of had to develop in, in the last yeah. several years. And we were kind of really listening to the market. The market was telling us they wanted SDVOE solutions. And I remember yeah. it very specifically from, from yeah. a different consultant in New York City saying, SDVOE. And so we, yeah, we joined that we joined the Alliance. We're big supporters, love Justin. And, and very soon we're going to have our, our implementation. So yeah. This year? Are we, we talking like yeah. this year? I would say hopefully by the end of this year. Yeah. We'll have the okay. product. Sheet. We're, we're in, we're in development right now. Okay. And, and Taurus available now? Taurus is available now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for the, I was about four versions, put the fourth finger up. <laughs> four different model numbers. All right. There's, there's two there's two two by ones and two four by twos. Is that correct? Let me wrap this up for you, Mark. Oh. <laughs> it's a good try, though. Jason, <laughs> it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure Please. to see you guys. We'd love to answer your questions at sales.na at Lightwear. <laughs> so visit us anytime at lightwear.com. He's a pro, <laughs> isn't he? Look at him. Look at him go, right? He's done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. All right. All right. Awesome. Jason Torado, thank you for so much for coming on the show, mate. And uh, we really appreciate your time. And uh, no doubt, you know, when you come to uh, sunny Queensland, um, look, I'll be sitting at the airport waiting for you in my Tesla um, <laughs> to, to take you wherever you want, really, you know. Uh, I hope to see you soon, man. I hope to see you soon. Pete, I'll see you soon, okay? Take it easy, guys. Thanks, mate. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.